I think we can try to watch Oh, wow. Uh, and I, I and it's mural service, so you're all over. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's New York. I have a set of mural services. So I around California, Oregon, Washington, and it's mostly West Coast stuff. Anyway, we're doing a travel. So it kind of jumped to Seattle. I just got home last week. Yeah, it's a big, big project. Yeah. actually started working on it it's earlier it's this like year two sides, and, uh, you know, it opened for the Richmond Life Center and then, in like, the East like, Bay uh -huh. in so April of next year. It's, it's, okay. It's all yeah. part of the French system. Yeah. We're all going there. You know, it's fun. It's yeah, fun. so I'm working on that. So, and then I'm, I've am i got a couple of proposals in into yeah. um, like, some other that's organizations. That's actually, I've been Zoom meeting a museum in Southern California this Wednesday. Yeah, I'll be doing it. It's all good. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, what do you think? Uh, well, these days I've been watching a lot of the Olympics. Oh, yeah, me too. Super I know, me but, too. Uh, I went in 84. Yeah, she is. And I'm hoping that I can go again. I did go, and you know, I'm from LA. My parents are Hi. Hi. Hi, Lisa. How are you? Good. How is everyone? Yes. Should we go? Okay, let's How do it. I just moved my Okay. okay, everyone, we're going to start. Are you good, Meredith? Are you ready? Yep. All right. Oops. Okay. I call this meeting to order. Welcome to the August 5th, 2024 meeting of Art in Public Places. The time is 3.30. Um, Reporting Secretary Jack will take roll. All righty. Chair Baumgartner? Here. Vice Chair Kiefer? Here. Committee Member Azadarian? Present. Committee Member Faulkner? Here. Committee Member Nathanson? Here. And Committee Member Puentes? Here. All right. And then uh, Committee Member Stewart will not be joining us today. So let the record reflect that we have six present and one absent. Thank you. This is the time, number four, um, when any person may address. From the public, make comments on any items. I don't see anyone from the public here. So we could just all right, move along. Um, and then next I will oh. Hello. There you go. What there timing? You. What timing? <laughs> Hello, I'm just going to address you directly. Would you like to make any kind of comment from the public? Because this is our period of time. Perfect timing. Um, <laughs> for anything that's not on the agenda, you're welcome to take three minutes. And would like to introduce yourself first? Certainly. Um, my name is Gregory Farron. I'm a longtime city resident and a really engaged person. Uh, I've been on several boards and uh, mostly now county boards. But I am mostly associated with a lot of people with homeless action and homeless programs, yes. which I've been involved with for 50 years uh, in low income housing. But I'm here today on an art project that I'm a little torn as to how much um, I want the city to have to respond to. So I'm here mostly as an artist representative asking artists to understand and perhaps recognize and maybe support. Um, a little background. You all know probably that homeless encampments in the city have been a problem that we've been dealing with for a long time. One of which last year, year before, last year mostly, was occurring down at the Joe Radota Trail underneath the freeway, the stretch of Joe Redota Trail between Roberts Avenue and Railroad Square is a trail that the city has been depending on for a long time and still depends on to be able to help people move from downtown to the Roseland area. It's been a corridor that people have talked about as bridging between the newest annexation and the rest of the city. Uh, last year, some homeless decided to camp out down there and it was a for a while a controversy because it's part of the Caltrans property and the city really couldn't do much about it. And the tish, the tussles between the city and Caltrans and the county um, were very public. 
Um, the city or the, the Caltrans in the county have lately decided to put rocks down there on all of the parcel on, on the side of Joe Rodota Trail, large boulders anchored in concrete um, in order to keep people from living down there. And it worked. There's nobody living down there. But the homeless community decided a few weeks ago that it would make a memorial out of it. It took the names of about 250 homeless who have died on the trail and around in the city. And one of their activists has painted the rocks with a white uh, base and the name of the person. There's about 230 names down there. And uh, a lot of us have been trying to help maintain it, meaning keep the city from or the county or from painting over it or trying to destroy it in some way, because it's a beautiful art project. I've asked personally, Liz Arebi and Mario to be able to come to the task of sealing the rocks, like they sealed the murals that you guys paid for and others have had all over the city, because they think that's the sort of final, um, besides the large sign, it's the final kind of acknowledgement of the art project. So I'm sort of here to ask you to not take any action on it. Not, we're not asking any support from the city, especially. I'm sort of here asking the city if it hears this to leave it alone. Um, let us complete it, uh, raise it to the level of something that we'll all be proud of. And that's all. Thank you. Thanks so much. And I invite you to go down and look at it. Yeah. Because you'll be touched. Sure. Gregory, can I ask? A mm -hmm. It's between. I, oh, oh, can we through, through the chair? Staff can look into this and then we can bring it back if it's an item. And my name is Gregory Farron, G F E A R O N, G for Gregory Farron, F E A R O N, at gmail.com. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm late. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here we are back to, I'm going to close the public comment. There's no more people. Um, now, department reports, starting with uh, Jill Scott, we'd like to introduce our new coordinator for the city of Santa Rosa. So, um, happy to make the introduction of Meredith Knudsen. She's the new arts and culture coordinator. I know uh, she's been able to connect with a few of you now, but she will be um, your head staff liaison from here on out. And uh, I will still be here for any questions or help or support that you all need. But uh, from now on, you'll be working directly with Meredith. And uh, Meredith, would you like to give a little bit of information yeah, about yourself? Yeah, it's great to be here. Um, I've already connected with a few of you, and I'm looking forward to getting to know each of you. Um, I come from the city of Napa. I was there for five years, spearheading the public art program. I have a little over 15 years of um, experience in arts management, special event management. Um, I've worked for the chambers in Sonoma. Um, I also sit as a, a commissioner for the City of Sonoma Cultural and Fine Arts Commission, so I understand the value of each of you and the passion and the volunteer and time it takes. I really appreciate it, and I'm looking forward to working with you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Okay. So should we in introduce ourselves to you, or have you read our bios already? <laughs> About the last two years of meetings. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> she knows you better than you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> do, do you want them to introduce themselves? Okay, so we'll move on to the next agenda. I'm saying welcome, <laughs> Meredith. Um, approval of minutes from the May 6, 2026 meetings. They were contained within your um, agenda. Um, it's been distributed. So are there any additions or corrections to those minutes? May meeting. If none, we will approve as submitted. So the minutes are approved as amended. We will now move on to scheduled items. 
And that is going to be 7.1, the 2024 annual work plan. Staff will review focus items for 2024 and 25 and review current public art fund status. Right. Yep. Here comes <laughs> Well, diving into my first one here, um, you have in front of you the, the work plan. I've split it up into the first six months and the second six months just to organize it. Um, so especially as we move forward with our monthly meetings, we can keep checking in on a lot of these items. Um, as I've mentioned, I've watched about the last two years of the uh, meetings just so I could uh, get up to date on the progress of the different tasks that we've brought forward. Um, and also understand what's been important to you and listen to what you've been saying about different items that you'll see um, on the work plan as well. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so let's get started. <laughs> um, this first month uh, was familiarizing and organizing, organizing um, my task list as we all do with our new jobs as we go into it. Um, and to make a list of the high priority items. Um, if I haven't already, I'd like to meet one-on-one um, -on -one with each of you to get to know you, why you're volunteering, um, your connections with the art and the community and how we can work together. Um, I'd like to keep those one-on-one -on -one scheduled, um, whether it's every few months with each of you, um, just so that we, we're working well together moving forward. Um, and if you have any questions or concerns, you have a direct connection meeting with me. Um, the additional item, too, is I'd like to start outreach with community partners and educational leaders. Um, our education is really important to me, and um, I think this is a perfect opportunity coming in where I could make my outreach list and start meeting one-on-one -on -one with everyone. Um, I'm a strong believer that the city should be the main sole partnership builder with all outside organizations. It's not just funding, but we should be that resource for everyone to come to. Um, one of the items that came up a lot on the um, past meetings was the public art toolkit. Um, and this was talked about a lot. Um, and I don't believe any actions have been taken to start building this. Um, but I could hear in each of you in the meetings um, the importance of this for the community. Uh, so I'm going to start working on building this. Um, and these items, so we can discuss at the end of this, but I'm looking to bring these forward in the next monthly meetings um, as agenda items on their own. So we could have a further discussion on what does this involve? How can you help, et cetera. Um, I envision the toolkit to be a public art proposal form for temporary art, um, a public art flow chart. That's um, how do you get um, temporary public art um, into our community? And all of this would be available in Spanish as well. Um, a list of resources for our community and making sure it's accessible. So, um, you know, meeting with different community leaders, um, possibly doing some community outreach meetings, um, ensuring that it's accessible and transparent to the community. Maintenance. Um, we do have a large maintenance issue. Um, a lot of our murals, if not all, have not been coated with an anti-graffiti coating. Um, the image on the right is um, on the Prince Memorial Greenway, and this is some recent graffiti that we're working on cleaning up with the artist um, that does have to be repainted over. Um, and then the red quake had some graffiti on it. We were actually able to get that off with just a um, uh, anti-graffiti uh, graffiti remover spray. So there's probably some solutions we already have on us. Um, I'm, I'm making a list of where everything's at, and I've met with Parks this morning to hopefully develop a long-term plan um, moving forward. We do have, I think it's about 174 pieces in our art collection. It's huge. I mean, that's just from one month of diving into, that's my estimate of what I found. Um, so it could be off by a little bit, um, which is a large amount of permanent public art for a city to have. So it's really important that we focus on cleaning this up and taking community pride in the collection that we have. A collection audit. This was another item that was on the um, strategic plan, I believe, as well as um, last year's uh, plan to do. 
Um, I've already started to pull the numbers um, to do, and I'll be doing this audit. My hope is to get this to you in the next couple of months um, on our collection. And this will be really important as we develop our program goals moving forward. So we can sit back and see what do we have? How diverse is our collection? What type of art programs are we offering? Where is, where is the um, artwork location? Um, how many artists have already shown many works do they have? So we wanna have a diverse collection. Um, we are working on a new website and the arts and culture section should be up soon where we're going to start designing that. So this and the toolkit go really well hand in hand with that um, because we can offer an art map, hopefully, uh, for the community uh, that we we'll start working on. So those three are, or, or I don't know, five or a lot, I'm hoping to get done by the end of the year. Um, and again, we can come back to the different meetings and address all of those items um, as it'll be really valid input for me as we move forward. Um, and then um, I really want to start diving into looking at our program, um, what our goals are. So with our master plan, our goals are to become an arts destination, to produce projects that create civic excitement and to connect to the city's creative spirit. So everything we do here, we should be looking at these goals um, and, and how we're moving them forward. Uh, the questions I ask myself as I'm developing programs is, is how are we an arts destination? How is it moving towards it? And what makes us unique? So I, I believe it's really important for cities as much as we can look at other cities for guidance. We have to look at our city and elevate who we are and what makes us unique. We have over 700 acres of, our, of park space, which is amazing. And we're this creative hub for Sonoma County, um, such diversity. I think we could really elevate. So I'm looking to start a, a temporary public art program. Um, for me, the art stands for activate, revitalize, and transform. So when we're looking at these spaces, whether they're alleyways, park spaces, um, downtown, how are we activating for this for the community, and how are we how are we making it that um, I always think of like. The, the kid that turns the corner and is like in awe of what they're seeing, right? That special moment. Um, and, and as you know, because I'm sure most of you are artists, <laughs> um, art can foster connection. Um, we can create a really great community storytelling. Creative placemaking will attract residents and visitors and beautify neighborhoods. Um, this will be a really important key as well for economic development um, in our community. Um, in the, oops, sorry. Um, in your little packet, um, I broke down an estimate of, of what a temporary art show um, could, could be with the project budget. Um, again, this is a little broad because I'm looking to do a little more research and then come back to you with a more of a proposal on this in discussion. Um, we could do you know, 10 artists at $3,000 each showing for two years downtown, right? Or we could do three artists at $10,000 each showing downtown. So we want to start looking at locations, um, what type of artwork do we want to do theme, but I'd really love to see us start to activate these spaces for our community. The next item uh, is art and parks. And I met with the parks team this morning and they're really excited to, um, to get a start on some visioning of our park spaces. We have, um, we have a select fund out of our public art fund that's for art and parks only. Um, and you'll see on um, your list, it's about $73,000, I believe, that um, we have right now with an estimated 93 by the end of the year. Um, and that can only be used for art and parks. A lot of communities now are doing a lot of temporary art shows and parks. Um, the one of the elephants is, is one that's new and it's actually toured the United States. That's in Newport, Rhode Island. It's going to the Meatpacking District in New York, Art Basel in Miami, going to LA, and it's highlighting um, the environment and conservation. Um, it's called Coast to Earth. I think it's really cute. And they're life-size elephants that are made in India. Um, so it's just people are getting creative and communities are on, on how can we engage our, our community through art. Um, and I also, the idea of programming, 
So the additional items that we'll be working on um, will be a marketing and outreach strategy as we start to design these programs. Um, the public art master plan um, and policy review, um, that does need to uh, be looked at and it's likely we'll need an update. Uh, so we'll be looking at that at the beginning of next year. And um, grant research and program planning. There's some great grants out there that have already come across. So it's just setting those aside and, and uh, beginning of next year, diving into what we can do. So the recommended action uh, today is to approve the 2024 to 2025 annual work plan and recommended expenditure plan. Thanks. Thank you, Meredith. Um, are there any questions from the committee? Questions only here, please. And we'll have the discussion after that. Yes. Um, my question is the Asawa panels. Uh, my understanding previously that uh, the fundings coming um, to support that were not from the Art and Public Places Committee Fund. It was um, from the downtown district. They were, it was other entities outside. I have in my notes that 300,000 was set aside for the pouring of the bronze um, from the arts fund. Okay. And there were, but the building of the fountain and everything else was coming from that. Okay. Um, but we set aside 300,000 in our arts fund for the actual pouring of the bronze of the art. Okay. Um, and I'll confirm that. No, and I'll, I'll need to recheck my notes. I yeah, checked I'll them earlier. I did too. <laughs> and I, the past, because right. I just yeah. remember, yeah talking about it all the time. Mm -hmm. And I know right. that was something that it did need more funds, additional funds to um, be completed. Okay. Yeah, I have here, we set aside 300,000. Okay. And when was that? Uh, do you remember which meeting? Did you I don't that? know. Okay. I think, I think okay. I know for you. Okay. Yeah, it would be, yeah, if we can please get a, an update on that project, because it's been, you know, a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in the making, and so, yeah. Yeah. Or in, in, I mean, I think what would be helpful for me is understanding the timeline of what responsibility does the, the third-party contractor need to complete in terms of building the fountain in order for the pouring of um, material that has been the, the funds that have been put aside by the public art program in order to do that where does that line up yeah we did meet with them and um they said that the fountain does need to be completed in order to do the pouring just so that they get the measurements correct so mm -hmm. but i'll get a further update on the whole process do, do, you, do you know if they had completed the restoration on the original concrete um they're they're casting from the original panels which were um, in concrete and then they're making that into fraud. So do you know what the status is? Well, I know those are still in storage, uh, but I don't know the status if we had to upgrade those in order to get for it. Yeah, I, they needed some restoration in order okay. to actually um, cast them properly so they wouldn't be casting bronze on damaged <laughs> panels. Mm -hmm. That was my understanding. I thought for the chair, we could bring this back as I thought I absolutely was already forgotten about it. I don't know if it's it's not not okay. I don't okay. for okay. I knew they were going to. But yeah. Keep on. Any other questions? We keep the questions. Yeah. I have a question. Meredith, do you have um, um, re, um, experience in research in grants? Like, have you done stuff like that? Before? I have. Yes. I have. Oh, good. So I have done a lot of that. Yeah. yeah. And did well. you do those collaboratively with other people? Different departments? Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. It, just, it seemed like something maybe. We also have in the economic development division. Hiring for an administrative analyst who will be who's a large function will be grant writing um, for the whole division. So mm -hmm. we'll have some very expert expert people to help us with those. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great. 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 Other questions? A question about the, as we see our work plan and recommended expenditure plan broken out between July and December and then January to July of 25. Uh, the conversations that you spearheaded today with Parks and Rec, um, where do you see 
kind of layering in the conversation that you had with them today. Uh, is that in regards to maintenance mm -hmm. or um, art and parks and all of that? Well, Sorry, that's a kind of a yeah. two-tiered question. Um, really, it's diving into our maintenance plan. I think that's a main priority for me because I want to clean up what we have um, in order to start something. Uh, but as you know, as you're working, you work in tandem a lot of times with, with different um, initiatives. So, but the audit, the toolkit, the maintenance, I think those are really three key mm -hmm. items that it's in these next couple months, I can focus on that. Um, then we'll be really strong moving forward as we design our temporary art programs, art and parks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, last chance for questions. Hey, um, public, um, now we're going to move on to committee discussion. In order for us to Start discussion. We need a motion made. Does anyone wish to make a recommended motion? So moved. <laughs> yes. Okay. I, I guess toward the toward the minutes. Um, I move to approve the uh, uh, 2024 25 work plan and budget as presented. Right. Do I have a second? I second. Right. Okay. Now we have a motion. We can discuss. Um, who would like to start? Um, I'll, I'll start sure. since I made the motion. Uh, I think it looks like uh, it's in line with what we've discussed previously, and I appreciate you, Meredith, bringing it um, up to the point where we can actually look at it and, and vote on this. Uh, I guess I'm interested in, in what detail is behind some of these um, budget items like the maintenance review and the temporary art installations. Um, I, I'm trying to remember if we've seen uh, uh, budget breakdowns or what's in there, or is it just a placeholder uh, uh, number at this point? Well, it's a placeholder number for, um, for both, but I have the budget breakdown of the 75,000 of an estimate. Um, but setting that aside, I'd come back to another meeting and we can really dive into this and say, how do we want to be spending this? But I'd like to start setting it aside so we can develop a temporary air program. Great. I think you planned on bringing in each of the mm -hmm. items forward yeah. as separate, uh, yeah. as separate to go into detail on each one as they start, as she starts mm -hmm. preparing those actions. Okay. So you can Great. discuss each yeah. one separately. Right, so we can be looking at the 75,000 and then as you were describing a few minutes ago, uh, whether that is for a certain number of temporary art installations or how long they'll be mm -hmm. put in place. Yeah, yeah, we would discuss that maybe yeah. it would be our October or something meeting, November, so we could start planning. Mm -hmm. Great, great. I have a question. Um, the art and parks, how is this um, funds replenished? Um, where exactly do these funds come from? And, are, and I think you did say that they're earmarked specifically just for art. And yeah, parks. we get about 15 to 20,000, depending um, every year from the park. It's a 1% fee from the park fees. Park fees. Okay. okay. Uh, certain so, fees come in from parks every year in certain areas for the park districts. Um, those are in lieu fees. And then a portion of that has to come to arts. Um, okay. So they are allocated to parks and specific areas. So like Northwest, Northeast, Southeast, Southwest. Oh, okay. And that's for all the park funds and the art funds that come out of it. So when you see certain, uh, you know, parks being worked on in the area, a lot of that money comes, or some of those funding sources comes from those specific fees coming to that. Okay, great, thank you. Just regarding the community toolkit, uh, I think there was some involvement from Kim's in Creative and that contract, and I'm just curious about the continuity between them and that project, or it, are, are they going to continue to be involved, or is, is it something that you and Bryce will develop? Um, most likely, I'll develop it. I've um, I've gone over their um, 
they've developed for us. Um, and I do need to follow up with them, but I do think it's something we can we can take on. Um, we did set a large amount of set money aside to, for them to do that. And yeah. I, I think it's something we can do in-house. Cool. Um, I think if we do need to consult, contract it out, and we'll we'll come to that and, and readdress it. Um, but I believe we could do that. Great. Great. Are there existing contracts that are going to carry over or we're kind of starting afresh? Uh, there's some that are due to be either closed out or moved forward. So we're looking at that. Yeah. Thanks. I will add that um, uh, the city as a whole, we have to do an RFP process for pro for um, anything, you know, call for artists or any kind of project. Um, and so throughout all of these and other areas in the city, we are looking through contracts to make sure that that process has happened. Mm -hmm. um, and ones that haven't happened, we will be making sure that it's a fair process and putting it out through an RFP, who the person that did it before is welcome to um, respond to, but it has to be an open process um, for folks. So we don't, um, we like to make sure that everyone has an opportunity. So there's an audit for that also. Yes. Did they leave anything on the toolkit standing that you're taking and moving forward, or is it? Did it I ever haven't get seen that one that started to be developed yet. Okay. Um, but I haven't seen that in months, so oh, I'll yes. have to, <laughs> um, I haven't seen the start of any. Okay. Good. All right. Any comments? I guess um, actually one other question that comes to mind is we had we had task forces in the past and there was uh, quite a bit of discussion about whether to continue with task force uh, that structure to disband that to come up with a different way of focusing on different aspects of the public art program so that each of us could be engaged and plug in in a meaningful way. Uh, so how how do you see that uh, moving forward? I'm sure if you've, if you've watched all the meetings, you know, it's uh, <laughs> exactly. I was just reviewing it this afternoon going, what are we doing with all of that? <laughs> well, when we meet one-on-one, -on -one, that's, you know, gather your feedback as well. Um, I did pull some items from there, the audit. Um, I do believe that a lot of it is very important to develop into our programming, the diversity and equity and, and all of that, the outreach. So I think each of these are valid items, um, but I think we need some programming in order to act on them. So um, again, I'm open to feedback on that, uh, but I would like to have a little bit more. Um, these are the actions we need to take moving forward, but using this as a resource. Um, but I, I did review it quite well and, and tried to pull things that I saw um, that would be relevant. Great. And maybe I'll just add one more thing to that. Um, the city as a whole in a direction um, regarding committee, public committees is trying to move away from too many different task forces and subcommittees because we end up with so many of them. So I think I'll, I'll, in the future, um, Meredith will probably be bringing everything to the full board and then also asking for volunteers that want to help work with her on specific items that are really interested. So maybe not as many task force, but definitely need your help mm -hmm. and, um, and working through some of these projects and programs. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, yeah, let's yeah. say <laughs> we have a motion and if there's no further discussion, I'd like to call a vote. Jack, can you please record? Absolutely, all righty. Let's start with Chair Baumgartner. Um, approved. Vice Chair Kiefer? Aye. Committee Member Azadarian? Approve. Committee Member Faulkner? Approve. Committee Member Nathanson? Aye. And Committee Member Puentes? Aye. All right, let the record reflect that we have six ayes, and then Committee Member Stewart is not present. Great. Motion right. passes. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. We'll now move on to the next item on the agenda, 7.2 Program and Project Updates. And staff will present updates on Live at Juilliard and Finley Center exhibits. This is information only. Take it away. 
Yeah, so um, for Live at Juilliard, we've done four of the six concerts. Um, we've had uh, higher attendance at all of them than uh, last year. Um, so that's anywhere from about 450 to 800. Um, the largest uh, attendance so far was uh, the first date with John Courage, the, the opening um, one. And so we have two more um, on this Sunday and Sunday as well. Um, and uh, yeah, um, but it's, yeah, it's been going great. Uh, this year we were able to do some different like marketing updates of getting the city of Santa Rosa's social media to um, participate as well as recently uh, visit Santa Rosa. So that was a helpful little, little boost to reach all, all of our folks. Um, and also next year's the 30th anniversary. So we're thinking about ways to make it bigger and better and, and better, um, or at least increase the impact. Uh, and then over at the Finley Center, uh, I recently installed a uh, play on light that'll be in there through September 23rd. There's three different artists, um, Naomi Murakami, Alexis Wilson, and Karen Bolin. And so there's, um, each of them have different mediums. Um, one is a, an abstract painter, uh, one does quilts, and another one uh, crochets dolls and animals and interesting things that are in the, uh, the display case that's there. And then over at the person senior wing, um, it was going to be the historical society, but they had to back out at the last minute. Um, so instead, we have uh, Barry Sterling, who's a young uh, local artist, um, also an art teacher, and also somebody who's uh, participated in the um, our national arts program display that's happened there in many times. So it was lovely to kind of tie those things together and, and have her uh, present her paintings. And then in the display case is a woman named Shoshana Bernie, who's um, uh, disabled and retaught herself uh, to paint using uh, paint bottles. And so all her stuff is in the display case there. And that'll be, um, I have all those will be up in uh, the person senior wing through September 8th. And uh, there's more details on the city website if you just search uh, art exhibits and it's just it's, uh, spread out between Finley and person. And then next in Finley will be the California Indian Museum and Cultural Center. And then person will be the Pahomo Project. Thanks, Bryce. Any questions from the committees? Oh, Finley's uh, do we are? I have a quick question. Yeah. Bryce, uh, do you have any other input about what made this year's Live at Juilliard more successful or more attended? Um, I'm glad to hear about the boost in numbers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's just, you know, it's just marketing, you know. And uh, yeah, the, obviously there's just a lot more folks that follow the city of Santa Rosa's um, social media than um, the previous channels that we were utilizing. And then of course, Visit Santa Rosa is, you know, that's their bread and butter. And this is the first year that we've gotten them to include it. So mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping that that can also happen moving forward and uh, probably a little stronger too. Um, and yeah. Uh, yeah, and so then there was just, it was just a little bit more, rather than kind of being our own island and shouting from it, you know, it was just a little bit more of the full, full states together here. <laughs> Good to hear about utilization of social media being effective. Yeah, yeah. And every now and then it can work. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell me, how, how do, do artists get tracked into the Finley Center? What's the process of selection? That's, there's certain artists that have that have just been doing it for years on end, you know, and and quite regularly do. And then it's just when there's an open space, then it's just trying to figure out who's, you know, what's like a like more of a community group rather than a single artist, you know. Um, and then just trying to keep it interesting and diverse, and then also have folks that are at a certain level of professionalism that they are going to be able to really do it, and then also display things that are going to work for seniors. Um, or work for a community spot where kids are walking by. You know? um, I guess what I'm really asking is, is this been a staff appointed thing? Like, is this, did um, Julie? It was something Tara that and Jessica, uh, Tara and Jessica. Did, they just kind of, yeah. they programmed it. There. Yeah, so it's something we're also looking at streamlining of yeah. accessibility. Yeah, I was just curious, process. given our transparency, people mm -hmm. being able to buy this kind of like people slotted in, how does, mm -hmm. just like that kind of, kind of rings a bell for me. Like, oh. Yeah. Given yeah, we so, don't have a lot of public displays opportunities for people. Yeah, and it's definitely it's another thing that needs uh, that needs some some yeah. marketing support. And I appreciate you making sure it's happening and yeah. filling the spots. So don't get me wrong; mm -hmm. it's like talking to you since you're presenting. 
Yes, but it is also it's one of the one of the many things that in our in our new world we're going to try to uh, yeah to do. Got it. Mm -hmm. Super. That's helpful. Nice. We can move to discussion. If there's anything you want to discuss in these topics. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> no, all sounds good. Thanks, sounds Bryce. Great. Thank you, Bryce, yeah, very much. I'm going to move on to the next agenda item, and that would be um, committee member reports. And this is a time when you're welcome to make general comments or announcements, people on our committee. Anything going on? <laughs> Just apropos arts and parks, um, the Places Art Fair, which is an organization based in LA, uh, that's a kind of alternative arts based fair, um, came up and did did a did a did a fair in Juilliard Park in twenty twenty one. I think it was, um, and they're coming back in November, so that's something that's in the works. They, they, it was going to come up because of the five thousand dollar permit. It's uh, called Other Places Art Fair. Mm -hmm. Other. As long as it has the acronyms and oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, they're interesting people. Uh, it's something that's around the corner. Last time it was a lot of alternative spaces from around the bay, but as far afield as Chicago. It's great. LA. I, it was really fun. Yeah. Spent cool. most of the day there. It's great. Had a meal. Sort of, right. It was like a community meal where you could, you didn't pay, but you, you could. It was like sort of a, you know, but people cook for you and you'd spend all these people and it's wonderful. That was one of the few things so, I did. So the organizers are in LA? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Are you an organizer? No. No. There's no you. Will I'm sure. Know the people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I wasn't doing it. Anyway. <laughs> What's the date on this again? Mm, I, I, end of November. I think okay. I'd have to work on it. All right. Thank you. Definitely tell us when you know the date. We'll probably see it after. Other things people are. All voices or interested in the city. God, so. well, maybe I'll just mention that um, although I uh, stepped down as director of the museum, there are three really amazing shows that um, would be worth everybody's while to stop by the Museum of Sonoma County. There's a, um, an exhibition of lowrider uh, art and culture that um, is my, my last project <laughs> that uh, I, I'm really proud of. It, it's a very, very fun exhibition. And uh, there was new acquisitions to the museum's permanent collection. And then the uh, on tap uh, Sonoma County, County uh, Beer Revolution, which is, you know, it, if you want to learn all about hops and brewing, uh, that's where you that's where you find out. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty fun. So I encourage that. I'll also just mention briefly that uh, and maybe Meredith, this is mostly for you. Um, if you're reaching out to committee members for one-on-ones, I'm going to be, have a very active travel schedule starting the end of this week. And I'll be in and out of town and in and out of the country for about a month off and on. So look ahead to mid-September perhaps. <laughs> Okay, so um, last um, item is future agenda items, and we have a list that we keep adding to. Um, can talk about getting them put back up, but is there anything anyone would like to put on to a discussion item or something they'd like to talk about in this group on future agenda? Looking at our list, mm -hmm. we have a uh, item about how the APP can support community programs or events. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would love to be informed about when events like the Railroad Square Music Festival is happening and Winter Blast so that we can be more informed about a committee who 
uh, prioritize showing up as either committee members or you know, active members of our community. We can bring an events update at every meeting if you'd like yeah. about the upcoming events, what they are and what we can do both city and uh, the ones that are going through visits. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. Be, and right. I look at Bryce. I'm Bryce like, can do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I can easily do all the ones that I permit and then all the ones that are happening courthouse square. I can also try to get uh, the parks ones, you know, that they're a different department. But they are events, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, I can work on that too. Do we need a motion to get that on, or do we just get to? Uh, we can just add it to the ongoing list. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. But we're trying to move that one up onto the agenda. I understand. You. Yes. So we, we should, we should probably make a motion. Okay. okay. Right. Do you want to make a motion? Uh, I would like to make a motion for city staff to bring us regular updates about events and programs that the Art and Public Places Committee can support. Great. Second for that? Second. Yes. Great. Do we vote? Do we vote no. on that right now? Well, we should have a discussion first. Oh, oh yes. Okay, yeah. yeah. Questions? <laughs> yeah. Questions? Discussion? I think it's a great idea. Any Thank you. Anything <laughs> specific besides just what it is and what's happening. Is there any specific information you want? Uh, the okay. contact information for who is hosting the event, or, or I mean, you can't give out. You know, no, I mean, like uh, if it's like a city division, like if it's a city sure. program, we can let you know if it's by... private or city or sure. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, no, that was it. Yeah, actually, it would be great because if we wanted to show up with an official presence from the APBC, yes. we should have information far enough in advance and know how we can actually arrange for that to happen. Okay. And how are we, would you like a year of events, a month of events? Well, if we bring each meeting, maybe we do a quarter or something. Yeah. What's that? Quarter. quarter. That's that's an quarter. Quarter. You guys quarter. Yeah. 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 I think that's good. My question too, and is at these at these meetings, will we discuss how we can, as a committee, support these um, events? I would like what for is, there to be conversation about yes. that. Of, no, no, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. I would say, you know, either so with the, informing the committee of, hey, your attendance is preferred, yes. or hey, we would love for you to. You know, show up at this event as you know a, a representative of APPC or how we can show up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that's the beauty of it being an agenda item. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it would be Anything else anyone wants to add? If you're on this list or not, that was I'd like to move. Oh, wait, I think we still have to. Vote oh, on sorry. Globally, <laughs> we have to do that. <laughs> It's okay. been moved and seconded. Moved and seconded. <laughs> okay, I'm ready to vote. All Second. right. Uh, Chair Baumgartner? Yes. Vice Chair Kiefer? Yes. Committee Member Azadarian? Yes. Committee Member Faulkner? Yes. Committee Member Nathanson? Yes. Committee Member Puentes? Yes. All right, let the record reflect that we have six yeses and no nos. No nos. Okay. Um, the next um, regular meeting of Art and Public Places is scheduled for the second, which is Labor Day. So we're going to be coming back to you with what when the next meeting will be. So watch your email for that update and respond. And um, did we uh, skip? Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say for on future agenda items, uh, I would like oh. for us to be. Um, Looking into the presentation that Gregory Farron brought to us at the, you know, so um, just to make sure that we can follow up on that. So if staff would be please look into it. I don't know if we have, if have to okay, follow up for it. It might be that might be a city council matter, but we will definitely follow up on it. Um, and if we need to bring something back, yeah, I would say not necessarily a agenda item, but certainly it'd be good to have a staff report. So, so we know what's happening. Did you have another comment? Oh, I, I just, I, I went to see that memorial. Uh, I think it's important that it be yeah, I would want to cared for if that's a possibility. Sure. 
should we ask that it be an agenda item? I mean, so yeah. you can. I believe that it's in the county jurisdiction yeah. and not the city. So that's why I was suggesting that we wait and let staff um, take a look at it. Yeah. And then we can tell you next time. And if you'd like to agendize it, we of course can. Okay. Right. And I think Gregory also mentioned that there's a Caltrans, Caltrans jurisdiction as well. So it gets complicated, I'm sure. Yeah. 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 Because one... didn't uh, we have Mario Inrube come and talk about that project? I'm just further wondering. down. That's further down? Yeah. yeah. Okay. By the creek. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like Gregory is spoken with Mario and Liz. Right. And, uh, so I don't know. Probably give Mario a call. <laughs> That's off the record. <laughs> Up to the chair, Kristen, did you have I had one more recommendation for an upcoming agenda item or a meeting topic. Um, but I would love to do another field trip with the Art Public Places Committee where we go around and look at our, our art collection. And that was a great program. Uh, Tara was able to organize for us to take Rosie around. So if that's mm -hmm. an opportunity for our committee to do a tour, that would be a great way to connect with you, Meredith, mm -hmm. about what our what, what our collection looks like mm -hmm. and how, how we see it from, from the street and as a pedestrian and a biker. So. I think getting out in person and actually seeing these pieces would be very helpful for our conversations going forward. That sounds good. One more question. Go for okay. it. Yeah. Um, is there is there an RFP going out for kind of brand identity concerns or kind of potential redesign for some of the public art stuff? That's not in the no, are we speaking of the new website or the web? Yeah. It's, it's still been in the works, um, but that's in consideration. Okay. And um, it's still staying consistent with the city. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I have a question. Uh, so the county jurisdiction over that memorial reminds me that the, the county, Sonoma County, through Creative Sonoma as an RFQ out for a fire memorial, which will be located uh, in uh, Fountain Grove at, at the park there. Um, is there any, any um, maybe not action, but at least information that this committee should be advised about being that it is in the city of Santa Rosa? Sure. <laughs> um, so this has been an ongoing project, um, and unfortunately, we had hoped that it would have already it would already come to APPC and City Council, um, but because of the way uh, everything went, and you know, staffing wise, um, we're a little behind on that. And so, as soon as they have, um, you know, some kind of art plan, they have a specific group. A task force that is doing is going through the RFP process, um, and they had a task force for picking where it was as well. Um, so as soon as that comes to fruition, the, all of the information will come to the APPC, um, and then also it will need to go to City Council as it's going to be on city property. So we apologize that it hasn't come sooner. Um, I neglected to mention that at the last meeting, so apologies for that. But it will be coming before you. And the location is not going to park, right? It's not Things topics so fast. Okay. Um, I was just, I was, if we had missed the um, private partnerships, commercial real estate, and local artists, this list is like a pending list. Oh, like to, if, do you want to? Oh, no, it? Yeah. no, I was just yeah. wondering if there was any information about that. Okay. I think it was um, an agenda for the future. And I've not picked it up. Okay. But if you'd like to pick it up, you could take it and say, I'd like to have that. We have to talk about that. Okay. That's what, what we're doing. Okay. Got it. Do you want to hold on that? Or yeah, hold on. Okay. Hold. Okay. 
Right. Last call for any more motions or discussion about future items. Okay. Could, could we just touch on deaccession procedures? That's something I'll be looking at um, as we go through the maintenance yeah. as well. Okay. So if you'd like to any of that as an agenda item, um, I will be looking at that entire procedure of what we've done in the past and how we want to move forward um, with maintenance. We haven't initiated a, a list of potential. Not groups. yet. I'm, I'm, I'm oh. working on that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. That, that will definitely be coming forward as she works through that whole process. Okay. okay. So that'll come naturally, you think, to us? Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Do you have any other remarks you want to make about the potential for a visiting artist lecture program? Uh, this was an ongoing list from. Oh, that's not a. No. So, okay. uh, but if it's something that you would like to, I left these on because I didn't want to remove anything that was important to you. So I wanted you to have the ability to bring it up and, and still be able to. Um, and because I'm not um, sure of the importance to you of oh, these okay. types of items. I thought that was something you were interested okay. in. Yeah, yeah, okay. nice. These okay. were already on the agenda. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, sorry about that. Okay. So, uh, I just didn't want to remove that if it's something you still wanted to value and wanted to talk about. Okay. Yeah, actually, with that in mind, the, um, the Heritage Walk, Mendocino Stroll, that, that possible agenda item was put on the list well over a year ago, and it comes from two sort of two intersecting discussions. One that from the Museum of Sonoma County related to the uh, to a discussion by its history committee about making something a bit more public about the history of Santa Rosa and uh, especially downtown, but also with a desire for the museum to be connected through some path to Old Courthouse Square. Mm -hmm. And then a proposal that I think went directly to Tara from a community member that had to do with uh, this idea that you would take history of Santa Rosa and put it into some kind of a path or stroll that would go down Mendocino Avenue. And so these two ideas were sort of intersecting and Tara and I had a couple of meetings about it. And now uh, Tara, of course, has moved on to um, her position and I'm no longer director of the museum. So that is just to say, I don't know if that agenda item just is an empty placeholder or if there is actually a desire on the part of this committee or entities in the community to actually pursue that. I always thought it was a pretty good idea. <laughs> but, you know, it's one of those things that would really, I think, have to be a very um, well-focused, thought-out, budgeted proposal that would probably have a partnership with the museum and some other organizations mm -hmm. in order, order for it to move forward. So um, anyway, that's okay. just to put some context to that particular bullet point. Okay, returning to the what I started before, the <laughs> next meeting will not be happening on the 2nd of September. Watch your emails. Good holiday that weekend. And this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Record yes. time. I know. Oh, <laughs> Yay. Uh, Yay, team. <laughs> oh, what efficient. Yeah. I just, I, I'm sorry. I have a question. Are we going to be meeting at 3.30 in because we had been meeting at three o'clock before. Is that something? I look back at all the old agendas, at least going back to the beginning of 2023. They all do say 3.30 on Oh, they are? Okay. Yeah. Then I am just crazy. It's, it's been a while. Thank you. Great. Good to see you all. Yeah. Hi. Nice to meet you. Uh, I'm doing independent curator curating and